Welcome to the Forest Analytics Landing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Russell. In this podcast, we'll talk about how data and analytics are transforming the forest products industry. We'll share how a research-based approach to analytics can empower your forestry organization to make better decisions with your data. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. Uh, Those of you that might have been following my work for a little while now uh, might know that I like to talk about carbon a lot. Um, specifically forest carbon, um, and as it relates to carbon markets. And one of the things I've been following is the price of carbon um, through time. And so this is really the price of carbon per metric ton um, that's really hosted on the regulatory carbon market. Uh, And in the U.S., the one that immediately comes to mind is the California Air Resources Board's, um, their offset protocol. And so I want to talk today about Uh, just some of the trends in the price of carbon that CARB has been reporting on uh, through time. Uh, Now, of course, the the California Air Resources Board operates a compliance-driven carbon market, um, and so they've been around for uh, almost a decade now. Um, And aside from the voluntary carbon markets, which have really sprung up in the last several years years, uh, within the space in, in forestry, uh, some of the compliance-driven markets uh, have been around for a little bit longer, uh, like California's. Uh, and so this program specifically was created from legislation that was passed in California, um, and it doesn't just include lands in California. Uh, and so forest land across the United States can be enrolled in the program. And this kind of program, uh, just for some more background on it, is what people think of when they think about a cap-and-trade system. Uh, and so that is if you're a carbon emitter, You can purchase some amount of annual emissions allowances, uh, which you might call a cap. Uh, And if that uh, emitter releases below their cap, they can go ahead and sell those remaining allowances on the market. Uh, And then if they release above the cap, those emitters must purchase allowances uh, through a system. Uh, And so the California Air Resources Board system allows for that mechanism to happen. And so in looking at some of the data through time, um, there's really great data, especially through or going back to about 2018 on the price of carbon uh, that's been a part of the California Air Resources Board program. Um, And so the important thing to note that recently uh, the price of carbon has actually come down a bit um, relative to what it was uh, last quarter. And so California ARB holds different auctions every quarter. Uh, And so they tend to happen in um, uh, every three months. And so their last auction was in August of this year. Um, And so the important thing to note there is that, like I said, the price of carbon has actually gone down by about 12% since their last auction in May of this year. Um, And so if we look at the data, uh, data from the CARBS Auction Information Results webpage uh, indicated that on their auction on August 17th, the settlement price for one metric ton of carbon was $27. Um, back in May of 2022, that price was $30.85. Uh, and so that's where we see that 12% decrease in the price of a metric ton of carbon on the uh, California Air Resources Board market. Um, and so it's really interesting if you take a look at the historical data going back to 2018. Um, the price of carbon was around $15 in their uh, one of their early auctions in February of 2018. Um, and last May, it nearly doubled that, over doubled that uh, with that price over $30 for a metric ton of carbon. Uh, but uh, last month's auction indicating that uh, it actually was the biggest percent decrease uh, in all, at least going back to 2018, uh, looking at the historical carb data. Uh, In that auction last month, they offered and sold 56 million allowances, uh, which is actually a little bit less than what they've had earlier in their earlier auctions this year, uh, back in May and February, where they sold over 58 million allowances. Um, And so I think it's important to note the the slight decrease in the price of carbon. um, And there could be many reasons for that. Uh, As many of you are aware, there are just a lot of activity going on in these carbon markets now with so many large companies and organizations wishing to get involved more in uh, offsetting their emissions, companies making pledges to go net zero or carbon neutral, carbon negative uh, by some time period. 
Um, and I think that um, I am no economist <laughs> by any means, uh, but I think that there's just so much activity in the carbon area that it's leading to these uh, pretty big differences and, and fluctuations in the price of carbon. Um, and so I, I think this is really important because I think um, it really does matter, uh, especially when we think about lo- uh, smaller landowners. Now, a program like the California ARBs is not going to appeal to the small family forest landowner with 60 acres of land uh, that is thinking about enrolling in one of the carbon markets. Some of the voluntary carbon markets are well much more better suited to those smaller landowners. But I think still the price of carbon is going to have the potential to impact what we do in terms of forest management, what we do in terms of investing in our forests. Um, as an example, if there are uh, lands that are enrolled in carbon markets, perhaps that can influence the, uh, the sale price if, if a landowner is interested in selling. Um, perhaps that might influence what kind of forest management the landowner might be interested in doing on the property. Um, and so all of those things combined, I think it's really important to have a look at the, uh, the California Air Resources Board carbon data information uh, because the price of carbon is going to be directly related and feed into uh, and impact other processes such as investment in timberlands, forest management activities, um, and how we uh, continue to think about forests as natural climate solutions. Um, and so I'll post a link to the article I wrote up where I summarized some of the data um, and I think it's, again, like I said, it's very important to understand and to have a look at these data to see how they might be influencing uh, some of the management actions that, um, uh, that we all do in forestry and that we're all involved with. And so uh, I hope this is of interest to you. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks for listening to the Forest Analytics Landing Podcast. For more information on how data and analytics can empower your organization, visit arbor.analytics.com.